Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Michael Mann. I am Distinguished Professor of Atmospheric Science at Penn State University, where I also direct the Earth System Science Center at Penn State. Uh, my uh, research interests are in understanding the behavior of the Earth's climate system. I have served on uh, several National Academy panels and committees. I am a fellow of the American Geophysical Union, the American Meteorological Society, and the Association, American Association for the Advancement of Science. Received uh, numerous prestigious awards. I have authored more than 200 publications and several books. It is important to make clear at the outset that there is extremely broad agreement among the world's scientists on the basic facts of human-caused climate change. The US National Academy of Sciences, all of the scientific societies of all the industrial nations, more than 30 scientific societies around the US, at least 97% of scientists publishing in the field, all of these have concluded, based on the evidence, that climate change is real, is human-caused, and is having adverse impacts on us, our economy, and our planet. Yet we find ourselves at this hearing today with three individuals who represent that tiny minority uh, that reject this consensus or downplay its significance, and only one, myself, who is in the mainstream. That's 25%. That's a far cry from 97%. An inauspicious start for an honest discussion about science. I have devoted my life to understanding the natural world. Uh, in the case of climate science, it turns out that this lifelong journey of scientific discovery has also enormous societal implications. Earlier this week, for example, my colleagues and I published a, a study demonstrating that climate change is altering the jet stream in a way that is making extreme weather events, uh, droughts, floods, heat waves, uh, more likely. Um, events like the 2011 Texas and Oklahoma heat wave and drought, the 2015 California wildfires that affected the lives of so many Americans. Other recent studies have shown the fingerprints of human-caused climate change on extreme events like the fires that devastated America's heartland earlier this month, burning cattle alive. One local called these wildfires our Hurricane Katrina. February's record warmth was made three times more likely by human-caused climate change, and that record warmth fueled the drought that set up these fires. Continuing to pose important questions and seeking to answer them using scientific tools and observations, as a scientist, that's what I love doing. But I'm here today because I'm also passionate about communicating what we know to the public and to policymakers. In my view, uh, nothing could be more noble. Anti-science forces have launched a series of bad faith assaults on climate science and climate scientists. I should know I've found myself at the center of these episodes more than once. Uh, we've recently seen the latest in this perpetual series of attacks, and the story is eerily familiar. As always, they focused on a particular individual, in this case, Tom Carl, who in 2015 led a study uh, published in the premier journal Science that put the final nail in the coffin of the contrarian myth du jour that uh, global warming had supposedly stopped. Um, never mind that we've now broken all-time records for three consecutive years, and various published studies have convincingly demonstrated that human-caused global warming continues unabated, this, com this committee's chairman, uh, Chairman Smith, attacked Carl, aided by contrarian bloggers and the tabloid press. Smith even misrepresented an article I was co-author on, claiming it supported his attacks on Carl and Noah. While we disagreed over some details, precisely the sort of healthy debate that many uh, in this room would like to pretend doesn't exist in the scientific community. Both papers agree that human-caused global warming continues unabated, while natural variations continue as well. While such political theater plays out in Congress, the process of real science plays out in the peer-reviewed literature and at scientific meetings where scientists continuously challenge each other's findings. But just as our critics have intentionally ignore the many independent studies reaffirming the hockey stick curve for which I was attacked, so too have Carl's critics ignored the fact that his findings have been confirmed by the Berkeley Earth Project, a project funded by the Koch brothers. When I was attacked by Joe Barton a decade ago over the hockey stick, I found support from moderate pro 
science Republicans like John McCain and Sherwood Bullard, uh, the former chair of this committee, I would add. I am deeply appreciative of the efforts today by Republicans like Bob Inglis of South Carolina and former Reagan administration officials, James Baker and George Shultz, to promote conservative climate solutions. It is time for other Republicans to put aside the anti-science and engage instead in the worthy debate to be had about how we solve this great challenge to all of humanity. Thank you. Thank you.